Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, there many of you have joined recently. We had around um, 6,000 odd people joining our channel in the last uh, couple of months. So obviously many of you have missed my initial foundational series. So instead of recreating all those videos again, I'm going to give you key points uh, that you need to understand if you have HIV so that you know what's happening to your body and how the, your medicines are working so that when you have a chat with your doctor, you can ask them intelligent questions and you can express your concerns and uh, have a good quality discussion and also feel peace of mind. So today I'm going to talk about CD4 T cell, what it looks like, what are the various components of the CD4 T cell, how a HIV virus comes in, how it gets integrated into the, the genome. This whole thing at a high level so that you have a basic understanding. It's not as simple as I presented, but I have simplified it so that it's easily understandable. Later on in future videos, we'll go into each of those aspects into depth and at that time it will become more complicated. But this is the picture that you have to have in mind of CD4 uh, T cell and how HIV integrates to have a high level understanding of the infection process. Let's get started. Welcome back friends. I made a, a series of drawings because um, I don't know how to use animation software. I couldn't find good animation uh, to explain the concept the way I understand it. So I have tried to draw my thoughts. I have conceptualized the CD4 T cell and I have conceptualized the HIV virus. Uh, of course I'm influenced by all the diagrams that I see in different places and I've created a series of seven or eight uh, uh, pictures and I'll walk you through them. Let's get started with that. Now here is the first picture that I want to show you. This is a conceptual uh, diagram of a CD4 T cell. Uh, it's a circular thing. This entire thing is a CD4 T cell. And you will find that there will be multiple coiled uh, appendages on the CD4 T cell. There will be more than one. Uh, there can be numerous one of them. These are cytokine receptors and they have, they have um, a, a particular function. This is CXCR4 co-receptor, which is generally used by HIV2 and um, some forms of HIV1 in a patient who has been chronically ill with HIV. Then you have uh, the CCR5 co-receptor. There will be multiple CCR5 co-receptors. There is one here, there is one here. And then you have the CD4 receptor. There is only one CD4 receptor on the CD4 T cell. And therefore, logic dictates that one of the CCR5 co-receptor has to be nearer to the CD4 receptor in order for the T cell to be able to receive HIV. So I have put a CCR5 co-receptor out here, adjacent to the CD4 receptor, and then we have a look at HIV. This is a conceptual diagram of HIV, uh, which has got glycoproteins like G GP120 on the outside. The spikes are all GP120, and inside, uh, uh, inside is a HIV RNA, it's a single strand RNA of the virus and it's nicely enclosed inside a protein capsid. Uh, it's a kind of a lattice and it keeps it safe until it's delivered into the CD4 T cell. Now what happens is that uh, the GP120 binds to the CD4 and the CCR5 co-receptor and when this binding is completed then something happens which kind of dissolves the uh, GP120 and releases the CD uh, GP41 from inside the uh, HIV uh, ca capsid. And it kind of uh, melts out the CCR5 and forms a conduit like so. And the viral RNA manages to escape from the caps uh, capsid through the uh, GP41 conduit and into the CD4 T cell. So now the HIV RNA is inside the CD4 T cell for which it used the CD4 receptor and the CCR5 receptor. And that particular CCR5 receptor is lost in the process. And then once the viral RNA is inside the cell, it uses re reverse transcriptase to create a copy, complementary copy of itself. Now that is called a DNA strand. So what came in was a template. This RNA was a template to create a DNA strand. So now this DNA strand has been created 
and the HIV RNA, which is this original part out here, this is going to be dissolved by ribonuclease H. So in the end, this will be gone and only one DNA strand will remain. A DNA strand cannot remain alone. A DNA has to have a pair. So what is going to happen is that the reverse transcriptase uses the uh, original DNA strand here as a template and creates a complementary DNA which will attach to it and then once the two are attached they become a HIV DNA and they get integrated into the uh, nucleus uh, in the uh, they enter the nucleus and get integrated into the host DNA like so so this is how uh, the HIV infection uh, takes place in the CD4 T cell so friends uh, 100 or 1000 words of description may not be adequate to a picture and that's why I used a series of pictures to explain to you. If you have not understood how the virus integrates with the uh, host um, uh, genome, watch this thing again, go back, watch this thing again, you have to get that right. And then watch the second part that I'm going to talk about. In the second part, I'm talking about how various uh, ART components and various HIV therapies are attempting to arrest the uh, progress of HIV at various stages. So let me take you back to the picture. We'll go to the first picture and I'll start explaining everything to you one by one. So here is my uh, first picture and uh, you will see that we have the CCR5 co-receptor which you saw was uh, enabling uh, the virus to come in. So it needs both CD4 receptor and CCR5 co-receptor. This is what HIV-1 requires uh, in general in most of the cases. And therefore, CD4 receptor is important for the CD4 T cell. And as a result, the only choice that remains with us is to remove a CCR5 co-receptor. You must have heard about the Berlin patient and the London patient and all those uh, six of them who survived HIV after a bone marrow transplant. So typically bone marrow transplant is done as a last resort for leukemia patients or patients who are likely to die if they don't get a bone marrow transplant. Uh, and uh, in those cases, Sometimes doctors have the presence of mind if the, uh, the patient has HIV also. They try to get bone marrow from donors who do not have uh, the CCR5 uh, receptors. It's a kind of a mutation. And uh, those six patients got um, bone marrow which produced CD4 T cell without CCR5 co-receptor. As a result of which HIV could not enter into the CD4 T cell and therefore it could not multiply and establish uh, dormant pools and all those things. So that's how the bone marrow transplant helped the London patient and the Berlin patient. Now what's happening is that uh, AGT103-T is attempting something similar. So the modifications that uh, uh, add immune does to the CD4 T cell is that they uh, disable the CCR5 uh, genes so that the C CCR5 co-receptor is not expressed on the surface of the CD4 T cell. And as a result of which, HIV will not get a foothold. And the way I remember Jeff Galvin describing it is that it's the door handle. CCR5 is the door handle. If you don't have a door handle, you cannot open the door. So when you remove the CCR5, you're removing the door knob or the door handle. And therefore, HIV cannot open the door and get into uh, the CD4 T cell. So that's the way I visualize it. So what uh, AGT103-T does is that it removes this CCR5 uh, all together. So there'll be no CCR5 on a AG3, AGT103-T um, uh, CD4 T cell. It will not have a CCR5. And that protects it from HIV-1, all strains of HIV-1 almost. So that's the way one of the intervention works. And then we get into the next intervention. Now you've got this GP120, which is what comes here and gets anchored. So there are many uh, therapies which are trying to target GP120, which is a relatively stable part of the HIV genome because without a proper GP120, HIV cannot propagate further. So the idea is to have antibodies that could uh, target GP120 and come in between GP120 and the CCR5 co-receptor or the CD4 receptor. The other strategy that could be applied is to uh, block the CCR5 co-receptor by putting an antibody out there which can go and bind to the CCR5 co-receptor and prevent the GP120 from coming and uh, latching onto the CCR5. 
I don't know if any drug is trying to do that and what would be the uh, side effect of doing such things because everything on the CD4 T cell has got a purpose. We may or may not know all the purpose of uh, CXCR4 and CCR5, but they have a reason why they are out there. So the interventions can be uh, studied in a clinical trial to see how things work out and if they, they work out well and the side effects are not there, then it might probably become a therapy. So that's another thing that uh, that can be done. And then we go into the other slide where we have the HIV RNA already uh, inside the CD4 T cell. And we have the reverse transcriptase which creates a, a complementary DNA, which is the, actually the DNA template. This is the first strand of the DNA. So one of the other uh, in, uh, interventions that happens uh, is reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Now you have reverse transcriptase inhibitors which are uh, going to prevent the reverse transcription and creation of this viral DNA. And if the viral DNA is created, the reverse transcriptase has a second opportunity that is to prevent the complementary DNA strand from being created. Because if the second strand is not created, this is not going to be viable. The second strand has to be created and both have to fuse together in order to get into the host DNA and sit in there. So reverse transcriptases are available. Uh, they are part of ART, which uh, intervene inside the CD4 T cell and prevent uh, DNA strands from being formed so that uh, the embedding into the host DNA can be prevented. And then we have the situation where uh, the HIV DNA has been formed. Then the interruption out here, you remember that we were talking about uh, uh, VP, VPX and uh, ion channel in one of our videos recently. So those kind of interventions uh, happen to prevent uh, the RNA from going out of the nucleus and to prevent the DNA from coming into the nucleus. So those are the interventions that happen out there. So the, this is the at a high level how some of the popular ART and potential therapies work uh, in uh, trying to curb uh, HIV. So you have the reverse transcriptase, I gave you the example of that. And then you will have uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies which may try to target GP120 and prevent it from uh, latching onto CCR5 or CD4 uh, receptor. So those are all the strategies out there. And inside the nucleus also we have some strategies that are being deployed or at least being studied in the clinical trials. So uh, it's a very complicated field and I wanted to show you these things because we have just discussed this at a high level. Uh, in real life CD4 T cell is not so simple. It's got a whole lot of functions. It's got a lot of domains and a lot of co-receptors and receptors and each one of them have different functions. Scientists have to understand what is the function of each of these and what happens if one of those is disrupted? How does it impact the humans? And what could be the side effects? They have to realize all those uh, pieces of knowledge and then come up with interventions which are able to thread the needle and avoid side effects and at the same time achieve the objective of suppressing HIV whichever way it can. So friends, I hope you like this and in future I'll be bringing more such knowledge bites for you. And uh, with that, I would like to end this video here. And thanks and have a nice day, my friends. I will catch up with you in the next video. Bye for now.